The scene features some preamble, so we pick it up when it becomes relevant to our analysis. There are no bounty hunters here that I am aware of. The Geonosians don't trust them. Funnily enough, this line can be interpreted in two different ways. Either Dooku is just flat out lying, or he simply isn't aware that Jango Fett has arrived on Geonosis, remembering that Fett had to leave Kamino in a hurry. With that in mind, can you imagine the end of this scene, when Dooku actually walks out of the room that Kenobi's being kept in, and then runs into Jango Fett and says, Oh, I didn't know you were here, we were just talking about you. Either way, even if Obi-Wan believes that Dooku is lying, the joke will be on him, because after this moment, Dooku starts telling the truth. Well, who can blame them, but he is here, I can assure you. It's a great pity that our paths have never crossed before, Obi-Wan. Qui-Gon always spoke very highly of you. So this is their first ever meeting, despite their shared history regarding Qui-Gon. Fortunately, this statement is covered off in the Tales of the Jedi episode, The Sith Lord, where Qui-Gon really does speak highly of Kenobi in front of Dooku. Also, as noted within the same episode, Dooku is still a visible presence within the Jedi Temple throughout the events of The Phantom Menace, even though by this point, he's already aligned himself with Darth Sidious. I wish he were still alive. I could use his help right now. This is a very crucial line and one of the most important from the entire exchange. From his inflections, you can tell from Dooku that he knows that he's in way over his head and is in a situation he simply can't control. There may even be a tinge of regret for both the things that he's done and the things he's still yet to do. Either way, it's a very poignant moment as Dooku truly lets down his guard. Yet, it's all over in an instant as he regains his composure. Qui-Gon Jinn would never join you. Somehow it's easy to feel that Obi-Wan actually doesn't believe himself when he says this line. After all, Qui-Gon was a bit of a radical within the Jedi Order. Who knows, at some point, Qui-Gon himself could have become one of the Lost Twenty, one of the twenty Jedi Masters who left the Jedi Order by choice, just as Dooku did. Don't be so sure, my young Jedi. You forget that he was once my apprentice, just as you were once his. Now there's a right back at you moment. After all, Obi-Wan has absolutely no idea what Qui-Gon's life was like as a Padawan under Dooku. As was highlighted in The Phantom Menace, Qui-Gon was known to defy the cancel and ruffle a few feathers. So who knows, maybe it is possible that somewhere down the track, Qui-Gon could have actually aligned himself with Dooku and in fact Darth Sidious. He knew all about the corruption in the Senate, but he would never have gone along with it if he had learned the truth as I have. The truth. The truth. And now we have a truly defining moment, because you can clearly see that Dooku himself is wondering how much does he tell Obi-Wan. Now to be fair, this can be considered exposition for events that occurred within the Phantom Menace. But the true irony is, Dooku does actually tell Obi-Wan the truth, and he doesn't believe it. What if I told you that the Republic was now under the control of the Dark Lord of the Sith? Now this line is saying a little bit too much, because if the Republic is under the control from a Dark Lord of the Sith, the obvious question is, who controls the Republic? The Chancellor. No, that's not possible. The Jedi would be aware of it. Ironically, this is a great opportunity to quote one of the Emperor's greatest lines, Your arrogance blinds you. Obi-Wan has just been told the truth, and he already dismisses it, because from his perspective, if the Jedi aren't aware of it, it can't be true. Now that truly is arrogance. The dark side of the Force has clouded their vision, my friend. Has it what? Darth Sidious has been right under the nose of the Jedi Council this entire time, and they haven't picked up on it. With that in mind, you have to wonder about the end of The Phantom Menace, when Palpatine was on the same ship with the entire Jedi Council, do you think he was sitting in the back row having a quiet smirk to himself, saying, if only you guys knew who I was? Moreover, if anything was to prove that he could remain invisible to the Jedi, then that was it. Hundreds of Senators are now under the influence of a Sith Lord called Darth Sidious. Wow, now that is a lot of information to divulge. And of course for the Jedi, it is the first time they hear the name of Darth Sidious. If someone is in control of so many systems, then logically the culprit must be the Chancellor. So with that in mind, and the next time that Obi-Wan and Palpatine cross paths, do you think Obi-Wan will be sitting there in the back of his mind thinking, I wonder if... Alternatively, he may think it's actually someone who's actually really close to the Chancellor, i.e. maybe Masamita. 
Either way, you would have to think that the list of suspects would be pretty short. I don't believe you. Oh, dude, he's practically handing you Palpatine on a platter. The Viceroy of the Trade Federation was once in league with this Darth Sidious. But he was betrayed ten years ago by the Dark Lord. This is a nice little bit of exposition for events that occurred within the Phantom Menace. Though you have to ask, was Newt Gunray of the Trade Federation actually betrayed? After all, he went into the deal with Darth Sidious with his eyes open. Maybe after everything went completely pear-shaped, he started crying foul and saying that he'd been betrayed. He came to me for help. He told me everything. Based on the timeline of events, we know that Newt Gunray was arrested at the end of The Phantom Menace and was then subsequently released. So it's highly likely he then went off to Count Dooku to tell his side of the story. When the film came out in 2002, it would be easy to presume that once Dooku had heard what Newt Gunray had to say, Dooku then went and sought Sidious out, possibly with plans of joining the Sith. However, we now know from the Tales of the Jedi episode, The Sith Lord, that Dooku was in league with Sidious during the events of The Phantom Menace, either because he was genuinely concerned about the corruption in the Senate, or perhaps more likely, his belief the Jedi had lost their way, which was also covered off in the Sith Lord episode. You must join me, Obi-Wan. And together, we will destroy the Sith. Despite the element of desperation in his voice, Dooku clearly knows that Obi-Wan will not side with him. However, having never met Obi-Wan before, he really doesn't know what his decision will be. After all, would Dooku then think that if he and Obi-Wan could team up together, they then could attack Darth Sidious? I will never join you, Dooku. Dooku's reaction to this statement is not at all surprising, especially as he has Obi-Wan scheduled for execution later on. What's more amusing though, is that this scene follows the classic Hollywood cliche of where the bad guy tells the good guy all of his diabolical plans, yet in this instance, the good guy doesn't believe it. It may be difficult to secure your release. But don't worry, Dooku, because both you and Obi-Wan will return for another movie. Many of the details discussed in these studies are often expanded upon in comics, books and other literary works created after the film's release. Although we will endeavour to reference these works wherever possible, our focus remains committed to what we see on the screen.